So our next simple reassurance about sequences is uh, on the matter of limits of constant sequences. If you have a sequence and its value is, and its terms are constant, the sequence five, 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 then it will converge and it will converge to that constant value. Um, that is so simple that you would likely assume it without even really thinking, uh, but we're gonna prove that too. So um, let's state it properly first. Let a n, n in the naturals, be a constant sequence. So what does it mean to be a constant sequence? A n is equal to k for all n. Then what do we need to say about that? We need to say that it converges. So we're gonna say then the limit of a n is equal to of course that constant value that, that all the sequence terms are equal to. So um, that's obvious, but still warrants proof. So um, to prove, so proof, um, so we will show, what does it mean to show this? It means to show for every positive epsilon, there exists a cap n such that for every natural number n, if n is greater than cap n, then a n minus k is less than epsilon. So um, how are we gonna do this? Well, same way we always do it. We're gonna let epsilon be arbitrary. We're gonna choose a cap n, well, et cetera. So um, let's see if we can do it. Um, so let's let epsilon be an arbitrary positive number. I'm having trouble with this marker. Um, so let's let epsilon be a positive number. And then as usual in these proofs, we're gonna choose n to be something and we're gonna delay the choice of n because we don't know what is the appropriate choice of n yet. And it usually depends upon ep epsilon. Uh, it usually depends on some complicated computation that we have to do with this um, equation here. But no matter how we choose n, the next step in the proof is to let n be a natural number and to continue by assuming that n exceeds cap n. All of this is just boilerplate. All of this works uh, the same from any straightforward definitional proof of sequence convergence. And so this is what we should just go to automatically. I don't like, there shouldn't be much thinking required in order to get here with a big blank. And I don't know what goes there, but I'll figure it out later as I start manipulating this. Okay, so let's start manipulating this. We've assumed this, we need to prove this. So then, then, so what do we need to prove? A n minus k, right? Why does this say k? Because that's the supposed limit, right? I'm supposed to put the supposed limit here and the sequence terms here. So a n minus k absolute. And this is where I'm supposed to begin this long, long computation, right? Which usually involves many steps. And I have equals, 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 and I can have less than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. We're gonna, we always start this computation with any obvious algebra that can be done. And we always end this computation, if we do it right, with less than epsilon in the end. So let's go in and substitute what we know and then do any obvious algebra. A n minus k, what is A n? We have a formula for A n. Because this is a really silly constant sequence, A n is always equal to k. And so this is absolute k minus k, which is looking like it's not gonna be very complicated algebra, which is absolute zero, which is zero. And zero is less than epsilon. Why? Because epsilon is greater than zero. <laughs> and just another way to say that is to say that zero is less than epsilon. So this was kind of dumb because there was no algebra to do and everything kind of fell apart, but it's correct because it's a calculation of the absolute value of a n minus k and it correctly proves that a n minus k absolute is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we needed to prove in this thing. And so this constitutes a proof that the sequence converges. The only thing wrong with this proof and it's really confusing to early students in analysis is that I still have this blank space. And like, what am I supposed to do here? I never actually chose the value of n. For this proof to be correct, it has to assert like some sort of choice of cap n so that this assumption is meaningful. Like I'm trying to show there exists a cap n, but as you see in this proof, it doesn't even matter what cap n was, right? I don't even have to use the fact that cap n was anything. And so like, I don't quite know exactly what to tell you here. You have to fill in a value for cap n for this proof to be correct because you're effectively asserting that there exists a cap n. So something has to be placed here for this proof to be correct. Otherwise it doesn't even make sense. 
but it doesn't matter what you put because you don't even need to use this assumption that little n is greater than cap n in order to get the job done. So what should we put? Well, it depends whether you want to be fun and cute or whether you want to just be simple. If you want to be fun and cute, you can put your favorite number here. If you want to be simple, put n equals zero. It doesn't matter what it is, might as well choose zero. So choose n equals zero, it doesn't figure into the proof. We get this done and it's all good. So that's how we prove that a constant sequence converges. Now I want to just throw in a little aside here. Um, when we prove things about what happens when you add a constant or what happens when you multiply a, by a constant inside or outside a limit, it can be convenient sometimes to regard that constant as its own sequence and apply sequential reasoning to that. So the fact that constant sequences converge to their constant values can be useful because when we're reasoning about constants in relation to limits, sometimes we like to think of them not as mere constants, but as constant sequences. And so this is the reassurance that we need in order to make sure that we won't get ourselves uh, into trouble when we do that.